What's your main uh, belief in why God doesn't exist? What, like, why do you believe that? So atheism isn't necessarily the belief that God doesn't exist. It's the label the for fact. those. It's a label for those who aren't convinced that God does exist. Basically, yeah, yeah. there's a, literally a guy in here wearing the T-shirt that says, <laughs> "You claim that God exists. I don't believe you." That's literally, you know, how the what the truth is with regard to atheism. Mm. Well, what makes you believe that God doesn't exist? Is it a lack of evidence? Is it like <laughs> does he provides evil? I, I I love the fact that I just explained. And then you came back with exactly the same thing. The question you should be asking is, why are you not convinced that a god exists? Yeah, yeah, that makes more sense. Do you believe in uh, Zeus? Mm, no. Why not? It's a man-made creation. How do you know it's a man-made creation? How do you know there's not an actual god he behind it? He has arms, he has legs, he has two eyes, a mouth, nose. Well, uh, so did Jesus. I don't believe in Jesus as God. Yeah, I, I'm not... I'm not I don't know which God you believe in, but so you're saying that uh, if something is anthropomorphic, it can't actually be God and can't actually exist? How do you know that? What does that morphic mean? Uh, Human-like. Like us. Uh, could you, could, like... Well, you're saying that, well, yeah, yeah, that can't, Zeus, can't you're saying no. Zeus had arms and legs and that ex excludes him from being a God. So it sounds to me like he you're saying you like as well. hang on. It sounds to me like you're saying you believe Zeus existed and he had arms and legs, but you don't believe he was God. Of course. So what? May, what? Why are you convinced that Zeus existed? Mm, well, there's pictures of him. I wouldn't say he exists. There's pictures there's, of him. I think you mean how did he come into existence? Per, perhaps drawings, um, but not. It's not like there's a photo. I missed something. Which God do you believe in? Oh look. I'm a Muslim. Okay. I, I missed it. Allah? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. But but in any case, I'm still hung up on this Zeus thing because so you think Zeus was a real person? Well, I don't know too much about Zeus, so I presume so, yeah. Okay, well, th I think there's a problem with presuming that something you don't know too much about is true. More or less. Sure. Um, so... <sighs> So let's say somebody describes a god to you that doesn't have arms and legs and eyes and whatever else. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that that exists? I'd have to see evidence that he actually exists or some, right. some, sort, of, uh, yeah. some sort of proof that he actually provides existence. Yeah. Like, for example, he gave you right. ability to fly. He gave you ability to, right. I, he gave so you ability to do stuff human-like can't do. You know what I mean? Uh, so the question was, why don't you believe this? And your answer was, because there's not evidence for it. That is exactly why I don't believe in any God that I've heard about. Or all, or all, because I've also debated a few atheists. They say they don't believe in God because of the evil he provides. Well, there are people who use the problem of evil acts, uh, uh, argument, but you called me and I'm telling you that I don't believe because I haven't yeah, seen yeah. sufficient evidence. I'm still stuck on like uh, Allah being, Allah meaning God, and of course being one of the, uh, the Abrahamic God. I think, I think arms, legs, and Physical features are for you a disqualifier? Yeah, yeah. How did you get there? Like, how do you know the nature and physical appearance of God? Well, we can't. Well, how we believe it is you can't actually see God. He's the all being. He's the, he's the unseen. He's the uncreated. So he's always been here. He's yeah. never created and he's always existent. All right, so, so, how do you know he doesn't have arms and legs? What if he's a you spirit? Can't, you, can't, you can't see him. What if he's a, like Jesus, who is 100% God and 100% man? What if he has a... Could you say that again, sir? What if he has a, a physical form in some way? I mean, how do you, how do you make a definitive statement about what God does or does not look like if no one knows what God looks like? You can't see God. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, but you're claiming attributes of God. So basically you're claiming to be says, able... This is what we believe. Can I finish? Why. Can I finish? Yeah. You're claiming to be able to identify the unidentifiable. It says it in the statement of what we believe in, the 99 names of God. Uh, we don't, okay. So it's, there's a statement. Well, the 99 attributes, 99 attributes, how God described himself. How do you know God described himself? In the Quran, how we believe it, just like in the Bible, that was says. I, I know that there's a book, I'm saying, what convinces you that God, that this book is God describing himself? Well, there's no errors. There's, there's a bunch of miracles that happened and it was it. Okay, so first of all, back there, then, back then. first of all, the, the, there there are errors, but even if there were no errors, that doesn't mean that it's from God. 
I can do math and, and show you that there's no errors. But the, but the other aspect here is you said that you wouldn't believe until there was evidence, and now you're saying that the book contains miracles. So does the Bible. So does Harry Potter. Well, are those believable evidences? Well, that's what I'm trying to get to, is what, what do you count as believable? What evidence do you have that miracles in the Quran actually occurred? Well, I can describe a few miracles, actually. Which miracles? The ones in the Quran? Or the I didn't ones? ask for a description of miracles. I asked, what miracles do you have? What, yeah, evidence, just, what uh, evidence do you have that the miracles in the Quran occurred? Well, I have a few that are actually supposedly occurring. Do you believe it? Do you believe that the actual sun, you guys, will appear from the west or the east? Or eventually will appear from the west? I have no idea what you're asking. I said, what evidence... Do you, do you ever believe that the sun is ever going to appear from the west? Do Wait. I believe that, <laughs> Wait. that the sun is ever going to appear from the west? Yes. Um, I don't know what it would take for that to occur, but I don't think anybody would be here to see it. I mean, it's something catastrophic would have to occur in order to uh, reverse the orbit of the Earth. Or, or sorry, reverse the rotation on its axis. It will eventually appear from the west, not the east. I'm sorry, what? Scientists speculate that it will eventually appear from the west rather than the east. Which, okay. Which scientist brought this wisdom to us, my friend? Let me, let me get that one sec. Can I, can I get it? Or? It doesn't matter. Scientists can speculate matter? about all kinds of things. Let's assume that they're right and their speculation mm -hmm. comes true, and eventually the sun rises in the west. What does that prove? Mm -hmm. What does it prove? Well, we, the Quran predicts it. No, okay. Then call me back when that happens and you'll have a prediction that will have come true. And then I will ask you, the fact that somebody said something and it eventually came true, mm -hmm. does not mean that this required some divine knowledge. Because when how I order my steak, Sorry? How does that all come across? Something like this? Something like this, this high of a level? Someone, we couldn't, because many people also that, believe Muhammad. You know who Muhammad so is, right? That, that is an argument from personal incredulity. Basically, your argument is, if this claim eventually mm -hmm. comes true, then I will have no natural explanation for it, and therefore I'm justified in offering up a supernatural explanation. And you're so flawed because, first of all, you, that claim hasn't come true yet. And second of all, when it does, the fact that you don't have a natural explanation for it doesn't mean you're justified in having a supernatural explanation. That's how we got to Zeus throwing lightning bolts. We didn't know what lightning was, and we had no natural explanation, so we went with Zeus. But that, that's not how we go about explaining things. Mm. So not only are you believing that. something well in advance of the actual evidence. I asked you for evidence of a miracle. And what you said is, basically, the Quran says this, and if it ever comes true, that'll be evidence for a miracle, which is an admission that you don't have evidence for miracles now. We lose him? He hung up. Sorry. Hey, if every... Every religion that's ever had a prophecy and the law of averages says something somewhere is going to look like something somewhere, right? And of course, a lot of the gospel, or not of the gospel, a lot of the New Testament books and the prophecies there are actually informed by the Old Testament text to begin with. They were actually drawing from those source materials, creating sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy. But I, I, the fact that, hey, one day you'll see is his proof of the deity to me is, is it's not proof at all of anything. And it sounds like Christianity, it sounds like, I don't know how many other different religions where they say one day, when this happens, it'll be proven. And uh, it's, you know, it allows them to totally skate. They don't have to bring anything substantive to the table. Yeah, I went and looked this up mm -hmm. because it, it's kind of what I suspected. Is it in a tabloid or? It, it's, about, it's about potentially sw this potential switching of the Earth's magnetic poles, um, which doesn't necessarily mean that the Earth's rotation is going to thing, but it'll switch the magnet. And so where it used to point north, it'll point south. I see. And so in that, on the magnet, east becomes west. But even if that were to happen, the sun will still rise on the same side until the actual uh, rotation on its axis changes, which isn't, isn't the case. And it doesn't negate the burden of proof on every other claim made in, within the Quran or any other holy book, and there are so many of them. Yeah. And they're wild, off the chain wild. But it's funny because he'd be willing to accept if the, if the polarity changed such that the, where the compass pointed 
uh, now would be west and east, and now it looks like the sun's coming up in a different place, even though I, the, the sun is not actually rising from a different direction or orientation. Um, if that's the case, then you could also just take a broken compass and use that to say that, look, according to my compass, it's pointing there. It, it's, it, is a, it, is, it is a relative thing rather than an, a, an objective thing. Anyway, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, I've talked about prophecy before. It needs to be specific, answerable by a single set of circumstances, not subject to interpretation. Um, and even if that happens, even if I, I predict, and it needs to be something extraordinary, I predict that Seth Andrews will be on the show uh, you know, this Sunday. Uh, well, that's currently happening. But I predicted it for three weeks now. Does that mean that, oh, wait a minute, now we have to figure out how it is that I could have known that? Well, first of all, I would argue that I didn't know it in the sense that uh, I, I was fairly confident that you would be here, but you might not have. You could have had car trouble. Sure, you could have, we could have had a falling out where we blocked each other on Facebook and threw a little fit. <laughs> but the fact that he's here, the next question becomes, ah, how did this person know it? And for that, there's a number of different answers when we get to prophecy in, in the ancient text. Number one is, why are you assuming that they knew it? you're assuming that they had some knowledge of future events rather than a suspicion about future events or a claim about what they'd like to have happen. People all the time are talking about the um, state of Jerusalem, you know, reforming. That fulfills prophecy. Well, in that case, you have people actively working to fulfill the prophecy. And if I say a year from now, there will be a, a, a bunch of babies born and they will all be named Matt is Awesome. Uh, there's at least a non-zero chance that somebody next to you, don't do this, by the way, please don't, do so, not so, name your kid Matt is awesome. Yeah, I might do it, yeah, uh, sure. But, you know, that doesn't mean that I was being prophetic. So it's, it's a difficult uh, thing. I'm interested in the nebulous nature of prophecy. You know, in the Bible, it's there will be wars and rumors of wars. How yep. hard is that? Right. So everybody who's looking at some sort of a Holy Land conflict is pointing and saying, aha, we are now in the end times. There's a scripture, I wish I could remember it, someone look it up in the book of Revelation that, uh, was it Hal Lindsey or someone else had taken where they construed it to mean helicopters. Modern day, at the time, late 20th century military conflict, therefore mm -hmm. we are in the last days. And all We're of this language- We're always in the last days. Is, it, I've, got a, I've got a chapter in my book, Sacred Cows, available now on Amazon.com. No, I, it, the last chapter is called the, um, this is the end. And it's nothing but failed end world, end of the world prophecies. All these people came out and said, this is it for sure. Everybody, everybody was Harold camping. And they were all absolutely sure. And this dates back thousands upon thousands of years, and nobody has gotten it right, you know? They're all taking all, I don't know if they're pattern seekers, if it's wishful thinking, if, if they're charlatans, or if it's something else. But they're all wrong. I've just been asked to set up a Microsoft family by my laptop. I think I'll pass. And Thank you for interrupting me. Yeah, so at the end of the day, we have something that hasn't actually happened. But if it did happen, this is the larger point to get to. If you have something that seems to be a prediction and then it comes true, the next question is, what is the connection between the prediction and the thing coming true? Did they have actual information about the future and they accurately predicted it? And even if you could reasonably conclude that the most plausible explanation is that somebody then had seen and, and experienced and had access to information from the future. The next question becomes, how did that happen? How do you rule out time travel? If you're going to allow in things like gods communicating, how do you rule out time travel? How do you rule out countless other potential visions or things that you don't understand? Because once you let God in as a potential explanation, everything's now possible. Any, any explanation could work. You have to have a way to rule out potential explanations and to rule in which ones you think should be included. 